before we finish, yes, I, I'd like you to go home with something. Thank you. So uh, this is a book. Uh, it might seem a little bit strange, but uh, uh, we had a television, a well-known television journalist here in Ireland by the name of Charlie Bird, very old-style kind of hard-hitting journalist, um, who we asked to get involved with the marriage equality campaign. And he did. And the one thing we asked him to do was, would he do this particular project around the country called uh, I'm Voting Yes, Ask Me Why? Okay. Which is where we kind of organized public meetings around the country where people stood up and said, well, the reason why I'm voting the way I'm voting is X. And it didn't matter whether you were voting in favor or against. Everybody was welcome. But in the experience of going around the country and hearing people's stories about why they were voting yes and the experiences they had as either uh, lesbian, gay, bisexual, or transgender people or family members or partner or whatever, he f it lit something inside him. And he became, ex he couldn't believe the stories he had heard uh, that people told. So he decided after the campaign to go around the country and gather as many of the stories as he possibly could. And he, brought, he put together this book it's called A Day in May, and it's all these individual stories of people from Ireland um, about what it was like for them. There's Nuala, who, great, inspira oh, sorry, great inspiration to me. Nuala Ward from Galway. Uh, I've oh, there she is, from Galway. Um, brilliant, Look, working in a very conservative part of Ireland, um, very traditional part of Ireland, um, not easy to be out there at all. Um, and she, for, since, since the early 90s, has been uh, really dynamic uh, in that er part of Ireland in doing things. I just want to give you this to take back to America. Um, it's our stories. Um, and they, uh, they'll make you laugh, they'll make you cry, oh. um, but they're very inspirational. So Thank there you, you go. Thank you very much. Thank you. We have time for some questions. Oh. If anyone would like to ask Carl something, feel welcome. Cat got your tongue. Um, thank you very much, Carl. Being here perhaps slightly earlier than yourself, you, you portrayed <coughs> so much that I experienced. Um, I'm always intrigued. Uh, the campaign for um, gay marriage. Um, which was, you know, very, I mean, I think it created a storm almost all over the world. Yeah. Um, do you attribute its success to the campaign run-up at the time, or the gradual expansion that you've explained of, um, you know, people, gay pride and so forth? Do you think it was a, a result of a slow build-up, or do you think, uh, people, a general widening of people's experience? I think it was a, a gradual thing. Um, so some people think that the whole marriage equality uh, thing happened in the space of about two years. In actual fact, if you ask one organization called Marriage Equality, they'll tell you it took them eight years to get to the point of having the referendum. And others will tell you it took 30 years to get to that point. Um, we've. In terms of our approach to bringing about change in Ireland for the LGBT community, we've always taken it on the step-by-step -step basis. So what you do is, first of all, we, the first thing we had to establish was that being criminalized under the law was a huge barrier. We had to get that removed. Once that was removed, we could then start looking at, well then, how do we make it uh, possible for uh, the lesbian and gay community in particular at that time um, because trans issues hadn't really come up and bisexual stuff wasn't, this sounds unfair, but it wasn't particularly on the agenda as such at the time. Um, so how do we make society more accepting and open uh, of uh, lesbian and gay people? And then so the next step was to introduce the equality legislation. But as a community, uh, as activists, the decision was taken that it shouldn't just be about sexual orientation, that we weren't the only people in society who were discriminated against in terms of access to services and employment. And so we should pull together a coalition. And so our equality legislation actually addresses nine separate areas uh, in terms of, of discrimination. Um, so that, that was a, another step forward. Um, then in t on the road to, the, okay, so, I'm going to bring up what was a little bit of trouble for us in the community because there were two camps in the gay community in Ireland um, about which way we should go in terms of marriage. 
There were those who said, we go the civil partnership route first, and then over time build towards uh, marriage equality. And then there was the other camp who said, no, we go straight for marriage. No, no accepting halfway house or anything like that. We had a, a unique situation in that our constitution as written and interpreted by our Supreme Court, all the legal expertise uh, that we got, well, I wouldn't say all because there were some people different, but majority of what we got was that it would only happen if, we couldn't do it through legislation as happened in other countries, like in, in Britain, I'm assuming you're from Britain. So Parliament introduced it in Britain. We couldn't do it that way because the Supreme Court would say it was against the Constitution. It had to be a constitutional referendum. Mm. But we got civil partnership in 2010, and by the time we got around to uh, starting the campaign around civil marriage um, equality uh, for the referendum in 2015, uh, we had already got people used to the idea of saying they were going to a gay wedding. So it was civil partnership, legally it was civil partnership, but nobody was saying we're going off to see uh, to the civil partnership that's taking place. They were saying we're going off to the wedding. So it became part of the normal speak for people to say, it's gay wedding, it's gay wedding. So when we came around and we were saying, we want gay weddings, we want gay marriage, people were, what, you don't already have it? But I thought, what, what was I at? And so people had already made that mental adjustment to the point of saying, yes, let's do it. Now, was I on board with the whole marriage equality issue from day one? No. Um, I would have thought that there was a whole other kind of uh, list of things, shopping list of things that we needed to do in order before we could get to the point of dealing with marriage equality. If we had civil partnership, it addressed 95% of the issues that were faced by same-sex couples in terms of taxation, inheritance, you know, all these kind of things. Uh, it wasn't perfect, but it got us most of the way and it solved most of the problems that people had. Of course, I don't have a family with children. So for same-sex couples who had children, there were other issues which were important that had to be addressed through the marriage question. But I wasn't on board from the beginning. When the bus took off, and I completely misjudged it, because I didn't think that it would, be, it would become the big issue it became in our community. And then suddenly the bus was leaving, and it's one of those situations that you say to yourself, well, I can either stand here and watch the bus go off into the distance and wave it off and wish it all the best, or I can jump on board and be part of the journey that it's taken and maybe influence to some degree what route it takes along the way. And so that's what I decided to do. So I got involved in the campaign. And I played a very, I, I had a very small role in, in it um, in terms of I, I work in video production. <coughs> I provided the service to the campaign. So we were making campaign videos on a regular basis, covering events, putting them out on social media, just to keep feeding social media and things like that. So that was my involvement in it. There was people who went literally no door to door knocking, saying, I'm asking you to vote to give me the right to get married. And that's a totally different thing to sitting in an office somewhere behind a computer screen editing. You know, it's, it's not so easy to go up to people who you don't know, complete strangers, who you don't know how they're going to uh, accept you or whatever. And if you heard some of the stories that people fed back to us about their experiences of going out canvassing door to door, people who came out and had holy water thrown on them, um, people brought into the house and shown the cross and told, you know, Jesus won't like you for doing this and all this kind of thing. So there was all these kind of experiences that were going on. And, and actually one experience I had when we did a public event in a part of Ireland uh, called Waterford, uh, where a heckler came out and got extremely vicious towards some of the young people we had there handing out leaflets and being absolutely bowled over by one of our volunteers, a, a woman in her uh, mid-70s, who went over and stood between the heckler and our volunteers and would not give ground to him. He was up into her face and she would not give ground to him at all. It was wow. just quite incredible to see how she had got to the point in her life where I am not going to be a second class citizen anymore. I have hid my sexuality for most of my life and I'm not going to let this person think that they can do it to me again. And that was incredible to see that happening as well. So, so that's kind of, um, in our case, that's how we went. That's the route we took and how we went about doing it uh, in that situation.
What is your experience of hashtag home to vote? Uh, home to vote was incredible. I, I mean, um, so let me just explain to people who don't know what that's all about. Um, so we, we had the ref. Uh, so a lot of Irish people live abroad, um, uh, as far away as Australia, as parts of the States. It, it was just quite incredible to see it. But so they were motivated because, because under our system, if you're an Irish citizen, you have an automatic right to vote in a referendum. If you leave the country, if you emigrate, you have up to one year after you leave the country to still be able to vote in the referendum. So we had Irish people who'd gone off for all sorts of reasons, economic reasons, whatever, to live in other places, who wanted to come, come home and register their vote. And they organised themselves in groups to travel home in all sorts of ways, whether to be flying home, whether it be on ferries from the United Kingdom or from, from Europe to France. Um, and they were posting, as they were making their journey coming home, they were posting videos on social media showing the, uh, the celebrations that they were having. Go on YouTube and look for Home to Vote. It, it's incredible. Um, we, we were sitting in the campaign headquarters, uh, so the, the vote took place on the Friday, and we were sitting in campaign head office on the Thursday night, and we're monitoring everything. We're getting the feedback from the canvassers who are out around the country knocking on doors. Um, we, were, we were watching social media and we saw this thing begin to happen on social media and we saw the trending of the hashtag home to vote and it took over Twitter uh, that, that particular night. And we were sitting there and we looked at each other and we said, we've done it. Because because we knew from all the polls and studies that had been done that the majority of people who we put responded said that they were in favour of changing the law. But we all know when it, it, the vote is the vote. That's what counts. Not what the polls say, it's what the vote says. Right. So we weren't letting ourselves believe that it was going to happen. But when we saw that, when we, and, and I have to admit we were very emotional in the office because it was incredible to see the way that people did it. And those who could not get home to vote sent messages back to Ireland asking people to please go and vote on their behalf and to make sure that they voted in favour of this. And so we ended up in a situation where in holy Catholic Ireland, 62.2% of those who went out to vote on the referendum voted in favour of change. It was just incredible, you know, and for, for those of us who've lived through all the changes that have happened in Ireland, you know, going from, so we, we currently have the whole abortion issue that's going on, that's up for debate again, again, we still haven't resolved that one. Um, divorce only came into existence in Ireland in 1995. Um, uh, to see all those changes happen uh, is quite incredible to live through that, you know, and, and it's, it's only having lived through it, I think, that you realise the significance and the impact of it. So, so it is quite incredible and, and that was amazing. And I do would say to anybody, just if you want to, like if, if you like a good tearjerker, go onto YouTube and do look up Home to Vote because it would, it would move you when you see the way that people wear about it. How have you uh, embraced social media? Um, I do Twitter. And maybe I shouldn't do Twitter. Um, <laughs> I try to be in control of myself when I'm doing it, and I try to use it as a platform to be progressive and to be positive, and you know all this kind of thing, and try and promote issues that I think are important around LGBT rights, equalities, human rights, things like that. But occasionally, I come in contact with a Trump supporter, <laughs> and then all bets are off. <laughs> and I can be as abusive with those people as, as they can be back. Um, but social media for me, um, and that's the only thing I use is, is Twitter. That's the only uh, one that I allow myself to use. Because, you know, if you're a keyboard warrior, you're only ever behind the keyboard. And I much prefer to be out with real people in the real world. Uh, it's, I think it's much more fulfilling. And so while I do use Twitter uh, wherever I can, wherever I can, in as controlled a way as I possibly can, um, I do much prefer to be out there and meeting with people. Um, and, you know, people might say, well, you only ever get to meet the same people in the circle that you hang around with. Well, here am I today, and there's people from uh, Belgium and from the UK and from... 
London. From London. Oh, from, okay, from London. Um, but there's people from, you know, outside of Ireland here, and I'm getting to meet them. If I was sitting on Twitter, you know, there's no there's the possibility I wouldn't get to meet any of you guys and talk to any of you guys. So, you know, that's, that's the benefit of getting out there and meeting real people. Okay. Thank you, everyone, and thank you, Dublin Ireland. Thank you, thank you. Well done.